New Orleans theaters also featured minstrel music. So-called plantation songs, written by white and black songwriters, performed by whites blacked up as blacks, and sometimes in later years, by blacks blacked up as whites playing blacks. On the surface, minstrelsy seemed simply to reinforce ugly racial stereotypes. Minstrelsy was the most uh, popular form of American entertainment for about 80 years in the United States, beginning in the 1840s. It produced the first body of serious pop songs, Stephen Foster, James Bland, others, songs that we still, all of us to this day, know. It produced a national humor that we all know. Why did the chicken cross the road? Who is that woman I saw you with last night? Because you had minstrel troops very much codified, all doing the same kinds of songs, same kinds of humor, crisscrossing the whole country, not just into major cities, but to all kinds of towns, any place where there was a hall where they could perform, it was like early television. It was the first entertainment form that everybody in the United States knew. Everybody heard the same songs. Everybody heard the same jokes. This had never happened before, and it wouldn't really happen again until the movies. Despite its overt racism, the minstrel show was a blend of lively music, knockabout comedy, and sophisticated elegance. A bizarre and complicated ritual in which blacks and whites alike would interpret and misinterpret each other for decades. I think that there's something that was so resilient in the black people and that everyone in America could recognize that resilience. And even though it was masquerading, uh, farce and comedy and dance and a form of music, and it seemed like it was uncomplimentary, actually, there was something centrally American about it. And that was the beginning of a long relationship between blacks and whites and black entertainment and white appropriation of it and this strange dance that we've been doing with each other since really the beginning of our relationship in America. Too close, it's too deep a story. So you have to degrade the relationship. You have to do degrading things so that you can live with the tremendous affront to humanity that slavery was. The first big minstrel hit was written down and performed by a white man known as Daddy Rice, who said he'd first heard it being sung by a black stable hand. Rice named the tune after the man, Jim Crow. <laughs> 